we thank our lord and uh, save jesus christ for giving this opportunity to study his wonderful words of life so today we are going to see a vision that is given in book of zechariah chapter 6 uh, verses 1 to 8 okay uh, can somebody read zechariah 6 chapter verses 1 Anybody? Joel brother, Romy sister, anybody? Read brother, go. Joel brother, read. And I turned and lifted off mine eyes and looked and behold, there came four charities out, out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. Very good. So here, Zakaria sees a vision, and he saw four chariots uh, coming out. Uh, he seems uh, one after the other, one behind the other. Now, where did it come? If you see, it says between the two brass uh, mountains. So between the two brass mountains, uh, you see. Four uh, chariots came. Uh, it had horses, it seems. Sir. Okay. Now, what was the color of the horses? Let us read verse 2 and 3. Uh, Joel, brother, continue verse 2 and 3 also. In the first charity were red horses, and in the second chariot, black horses, and in the third chariot, white horses, and in the fourth chariot, uh, grisel and bay horses. Very good. So here it says in the first chariot, what red horses, the second chariot, where black horses, and the third chariot, it was white horses, and in the fourth chariot, it was actually a combination of two horses that is. Grizzled and bay. So grizzled means what? Uh, if you see, it is a spotted horse. So bay means dark brown. So these horses actually came from to, uh, between the two brass uh, mountains. Now, as we all uh, wonder, what is the meaning of this vision? Similarly, Zechariah also wondered and questioned the Lord. What are these? Read verse 4. Joel Buddha, verse 4. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talk with me what are these my lord very good so the zechariah questioned the angel what are these my lord and what did the angel reply you see the angel replied verse 5 and 6 and the angels answered and said unto me these are the four spirits of the heavens which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth, the black horses which are therein go forth into the north country, and the white go forth after them, and the grizzle go forth toward the south country. Very good, brother. So here it says, you see, these are the four spirits of heaven uh, that go from standing uh, before the Lord of the earth. That means it says uh, these are the four spirits which go from uh, God. And uh, it also gives us a clue which direction the horse went. The black horses went the north uh, direction and the white uh, horses uh, followed the black horses uh, uh, while uh, you see uh, that actually the grizzled is the wrong time. It's the red horses. The red horses actually travel the south country. Now, what can we understand from this one? You see, uh, what is the meaning of this one? You see, these uh, color horses, uh, these traveled in a particular, uh, you see, direction. You see, so what is the meaning of this one? So how do we understand this vision? You see, see, uh, we know for the Bible, Bible is the dictionary. You see, so each and everything has to be read and taught and uh, uh, you see, uh, completely decoded from the Bible itself. Uh, now, if you read verse 7, there is one more clue that is given. Uh, read verse 7, brother. Joel, brother, read verse 7 also. And the bay went forth and south 
to go that they might walk and crawl through the earth. And he said, Get you hence, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walk to and fro through the earth. Very good. So they walk to and fro through the earth. You see? The grizzled, you see? Uh, also, so they requested the Lord. Uh, you see, that means the bay horses. Uh, they requested the Lord that they may walk uh, to and fro through the earth. So God gave the permission so that, uh, they may walk to and fro to the earth. It seems. Okay. Now read verse 8, brother. Verse 8. Uh. Then cried then cry he upon me and spake unto me, saying, Behold, this that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. Very good. So they that have gone to the north country have actually quieted my spirit. That means brought peace to the heart of God. So which is God that went to the north country? The black horses and the white horses which follow the black horses. Okay. Now this is the clue that is given uh, to us in the Bible. Now what is the meaning of this one? You see? So this uh, horses which went to the north country. So what is the meaning of this vision? The four, uh, uh, you see, a chariot of horses uh, that coming between the two brass mountains. You see? So two brass mountains in between it is coming means uh, there is a gap between the two brass mountains. So what does the gap uh, represent? Uh, you see, now what is the uh, two mountains represent? Uh, you see? And what were the uh, mountains made of? You see, the mountains were made of, uh, you see, brass. Now, what does the mountain mean in the Bible? Does anybody remember? We studied in the basic class, then in the second chapter, you see, a stone came and bound the image. And that stone which bound the image became a mountain which, uh, which uh, completely covered the whole earth. Uh, you see, and Daniel tells that is the God's kingdom. So, Mountains always in the Bible means God's kingdom. So two mountains means what? That means two kingdoms. You see, dear brethren. So brass mountains means what? Uh, you see, in the tabernacle studies we have studied now. You see, all the metals uh, in the holy and the most holy were made of gold. But the all the items which were in the court were made up of brass or copper. So this one we have seen that represents the two natures. The gold always represents the divine nature and the copper or brass always represents the human nature. You see, as uh, you see, the brass or the copper is an imitation of gold. Like It looks like gold, but it's not gold at all. That means man was created in the image of God. The brass or copper is in the image, you see, of gold. Similar like gold. So similarly, man was created in the image of God. So, the brass always represents in the Bible the perfect human nature. You see? So the two mountains actually means the two perfect human natures kingdom. So two human kingdoms which God uh, is, uh, had established and is going to establish. You see? So the kingdom which actually God, uh, you see, had first established was in the Garden of Eden. You see? God had first established his kingdom in Garden of Eden. You see? Perfect man, Adam, was given the complete authority to rule over the, all the animals. You see, but he lost the kingdom because of sin. But God has promised in the Bible, but at the end of thousand years, again this kingdom shall be restored back to mankind. So, the two mountains represents one in the Garden of Eden, other in the, you see, at the end of thousand years, the established kingdom. So, David then, so these are the two mountains. So in between uh, this, uh, you see, uh, two God's kingdom, there is a gap. There is a time gap. And that time gap is 7,000 years. It is 7,000 years that man has fallen into sin. And in, and in this 1,000 years, you see, mankind shall be restored to perfection. So this vision shows the four classes of people who selected, uh, you see, in this time gap. Okay, now let us read 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 26. 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 26. Uh, Munna Sutter, can you read? Go 
then cometh the end when he shall have delivered of the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Aha, see, he must, uh, and everything is uh, finished, he will deliver the kingdom to God. So, God will deliver the kingdom to mankind, you see. So, that is the end of the thousand year reign of Christ. So, okay. So, in between uh, these uh, four chariots, is what uh, this represents the four salvations. Uh, you see, in uh, this uh, seventh day period, the 7,000 year period, God is actually setting four groups of people for, uh, you see, salvation, to get saved. You see, we all know and heard the subject of uh, four rivers of Eden. You see, four rivers came out of Eden. Uh, Pishon, Gihon, Hidekel, Euphrates. You see, that represents the four salvations. Similarly, here also, these four chariots represents, uh, you see, the four salvations, heavenly salvation and a earthly salvation. Two parts in the heavenly salvation and two parts in the earthly salvation. Now, let me see who is going to answer this question. Now, which are the uh, two class of people who go to the heavenly salvation? Who will tell? Which are the two groups who go to the heavenly salvation in the divine plan chart? Rome Easter, Joel Brother, ah, tell me. 1,44,000. Very good, Amar Brother. And uh, great multitude. Very good, excellent. Okay, now what about the earthly salvation? Which are the two groups who come for the earthly salvation? Joel Brother, can you answer? Uh, ancient worthies. Very good. And? And... Who else is left over? World of mankind. Very good, sir. Excellent. So, it's simple. See, this is what the divine plan of Asia tells. Like can 44,000, great multitude, they go for the heavenly salvation. While the ancient world is, and a general world, come for the earthly salvation. This is what is represented in this vision. Okay. Now, let us see how to, how to decode it. You see, here, it doesn't say four horses came. But what does it say? Four chariots sir, that had horses. If only horses were given, we could have uh, considered in a different way. Because horses in the Bible represents doctrine. So chariot along with horses means what? You see, chariot actually, you see, huh, is uh, drawn by the horses means chariot is not an individual, you see, person. It is a collective picture, a group, you see. So this represents the four groups of people God is developing through His Holy Spirit, you see, in this period. Okay. Now, which is the first horses that came? It was red in color. Now, you tell me. It's very easy. I'll ask some questions. Now, let me see who is going to answer. Which is the first group of people whom God selected? We saw four groups are there, like and 44,000, great multitude, ancient worthies, and, and the world of mankind. Now you tell me, among these four, which was the first group that was selected by God? 1,44,000. Are you sure, Joel, brother, think before, before the selection of the church, did not God select anybody else in the Old Testament? Ancient worthies. Ancient yes. worthies, brother. Very good, very good, very good, very good. So the first class of people who selected were the ancient worthies. You see, from Abel to John the Baptist, all these people are the ancient worthies who never go to the heavenly salvation. Okay. Now we read in detail about this one. Now let us see how this color red is actually uh, uh, related to the ancient worthies. See, if you read a book of uh, Numbers 19 chapter, there is a particular sacrifice that is given there. You see, that was a sacrifice of a red heifer. You see, uh, let us read that verse, few, few verses. Uh, Numbers 19 chapter. Verse 
numbers 19 chapter verse 2 uh, amar brother can you read numbers 19 2 okay this is this is the audience of the law which the lord has commanded saying speak uh, unto the children of Israel that they bring the uh, red uh, heifer without spot uh, wherein is no blemish and upon which never came yet. Very good. So here a red heifer was selected is in sir. Now it was to be slayed, cut and burnt it seems. Where it was burned, it was never burnt in the tabernacle. This is the only sacrifice that is given outside the tabernacle. Read verse 3, brother. Amar, brother, read verse 3 also. Hmm. And shall be or unto uh, Elijah, the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one shall uh, slay her before his face. Ah, you see, this was to be slayed huh? without the camp, outside the camp, very far from the tabernacle, very far even from the camp of Israel. No, after burning, what was to be done? You see, the ashes was supposed to be taken and kept in the tabernacle. You see, and whoever is unclean, if he comes to the tabernacle, he can use his ashes, mix it with water and uh, sprinkle it upon himself. In that way, you see, the unclean person shall become clean, it seems. Where is it given? You see, it's given uh, verse 9. Uh, Amar brother, read verse 9 also. Nine. <clears throat> and a man that is a clean shall gather of the ashes of the ashes of the uh, heifer and lay them up without the camp in a clean place and it shall be a gift for the uh, con congregations of the children of Israel for a water of uh, separation, it is a uh, furnish, uh, purification, purification for a sin. Very good. Very good. So, these ashes were kept outside the same. If anybody is defiled by various things that is given in the law, what he has to do is to come near the tabernacle, take a little bit of ashes, mix it in water, and sprinkle a little bit upon his body. He will become clean with him. So, what does this represent, sir? You see, this represents the sacrifice of the ancient worthies. You see, the ancient worthies never were given the opportunity to become the church of God. They are never given the opportunity to become the temple of God. They were outside. You see, they were never, uh, you see, come into complete relationship with God as we are come today, sons of God. But yet, they could sacrifice to God. They, they sacrifice to God. Where did they sacrifice? Outside the camp, in the world. You see, they lived faithfully to God. And those ashes, you see, if it is sprinkled upon an unclean person, it will become clean. It seems. Now, what does ashes mean? You see, always if you see some ash, what does it remember? What does it bring to our memory? You see, what does it bring to our remembrance? It makes us remember that once uh, there was uh, a sacrifice that was given, that was burnt uh, Something was burnt. You see, the ashes and the smoke that represents the remembrance of the sacrifice. Now, this has to be taken, mixed with water and poured upon unclean. Then it become purified. So what do you mean by that one? That means, take the examples of the ancient worthies from the water. Mix it with the water means from the Bible. Apply it upon unclean, upon the sinners. It will have a cleaning effect, a purifying effect. How? Like for example, imagine we are very depressed. 
very sad that we lost everything. Uh. You see, we will feel as if we don't want anything, we don't want God, nothing, let us live every single day. But uh, during that time, we should remember Job. See, Job was a multi-millionaire. In one day, he become pauper. You see, he become very, very, you see, uh, completely lost everything. And uh, his body was full of sores, full of wounds. Uh, even his wife also left him. But, you see, Job did not sin against God. So when we are in trials, if you read the book of Job, that is encouraging to us. Uh, that is like a cleansing thing to us, uh, which boosts our energy and helps us to remain faithful to God. That is the sacrifice of the red eye for red the ancient word is, you see, whenever we feel, you see, very depressed to, to, to pray, not even to pray, oh, why should I pray? Go every day doing the same prayer again and again. So, that time we should take Daniel. Daniel prayed how many times? Three times. Where was he? Even in the enemy's land. Even when there was a law that if anybody prays, he'll be put to the lion's den. Daniel you see, open the window and prayed boldly. So, you see, when we are lethargy in prayer, if we think about Daniel, that has a cleansing effect upon us. Then, if he attempted to commit sin, you know, we should remember Joseph. Joseph was a very young man, very smart and a beautiful person. You see, so many times Potiphar's wife tempted him to commit sin. But uh, what did Joseph do? Joseph ran away from her. Though he had the opportunity, you see, he wanted to remain faithful to God. He did not want to cheat God. Similarly, he ran. You see, when we are uh, having the mind to sin against God, you see, we should remember Joseph. Nobody would have questioned, nobody would have come to know anything. But yet, uh, Joseph was remaining faithful to God. Similarly, you see, when we are tempted to commit sin, we should remember Joseph. That will give us the energy to draw away from sin. You see, then Jacob, Jacob, uh, you see, was ready to become a pauper. Why? Just for the sake of the birthright. You see, his father cast him away from the house. He never had anything. He was a complete pauper. He went away to Laban's house. There he worked for 14 years. You know, but at uh, God did not leave Jacob. God blessed Jacob abundantly. But even after returning to his father's house, he never uh, borrowed anything from his father's property. Because Jacob was uh, uh, always faithful for the covenant. He uh, was always uh, desirous of the seed uh, to have the blessings of Abrahamic promise. Uh, you see, so this motivates us to sacrifice to the Lord. When we are hesitant to sacrifice to the Lord, when we want to give something and we are not able to give, that time we should give importance to and study about Jacob. That has a purifying effect. You see, similarly, when we commit sin, huh? then if you don't know how to approach God, what God will do, you see, that time we should remember David. David sinned, you see, but uh, sinning was not important. Uh, you see, he acknowledged his sin. That was a very important thing. And after that one, he repented of his sin, you see, and accepted God's punishment. So God lifted him. So, dear brethren, these are the things uh, which encourage us to cleanse ourselves. See, read Hebrews 9, chapter 13 and 14. Hebrews 9, chapter 13 and 14. Uh, Romy sister, can you read? Thirteen and fourteen. Mm. For if the blood of the bulls uh, and of goats and the ashes of the heifer mm, sprinkling the unclean sacrifice sacrifices to the purifying of the flesh. 
how how much more shall the blood of the Christ who through the internal spirit offered himself without spot to God pure your uh, conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Very good. Sir. See, the ashes of an eifer sprinkling the unclean. This has got so much of effect. You see, to sprinkle upon uh, the unclean, it will become clean in seems Similar to the lot of examples of the ancient Vajis are there. All the things in the written in the Old Testament are written for our admonition. Moses, you see, he was never hesitant to, you see, leave the palace or leave all the luxuries because he wanted to be God's child, the people of Israel. So similarly, you see, these are the things, the red eye fire. Therefore, huh, the red horses represents the ancient bodies who were first selected, you see, to be in God's plan. And they were never uh, offered the heavenly salvation. They all come to the earthly salvation. And Christ's kingdom is going to be established. These ancient ones are going to be resurrected with perfect human nature. And they are going to be princes in all the earth. Okay, this is the first horse. Now, which is the second horse? In Zechariah 6 chapter, which is the second horse color? Who will tell? Which is the second hour's color? Zechariah 6 chapter. Hey, uh, nobody knows. Uh. Eh? What is this? Uh, read from the Bible now. Check, check, check from the Bible and reply, please. Let me see who is going to reply first. Black brother. Very good brother. See? The black horses. See? The black horses. Uh, uh, where the, which direction did the black horses go? Red, it goes to the north direction. You see? Now, what is the meaning of north in the Bible? Huh? Brother, is north uh, having a meaning in the Bible? Yes. North uh, is uh, a direction where God lives. Uh, you see? North means what? Uh, always up. Uh, north uh, is a direction where God is living. Read Psalm 75.6. Psalm 75, 6, uh, six. Munna sister, can you read? For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. You see, promotion doesn't come from east, west, south. Then which is the direction that is left over? North. If we want promotion, it should come from only from God. Read Psalms 48, 2 also, sister. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the side of the north, the city of the great king. Aha, uh -huh. city of the great king, side of the north. God's kingdom is in the north. You remember huh? when Satan huh? sinned against God, huh? what did he think in his mind? He thought to sit on the north direction. Read Isaiah 14, 13, sister. Muna, sister. Read Isaiah 14, 13 also. Isaiah 14, 13? Ah, 14, chapter 13, verse. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Aha, uh -huh, in the side of the north. Where did he say to go? Go to the side of north because God is in the Naya North direction. You see, that means north always in the Bible represents the heaven. Now you tell me, who is the class of people who goes to the heavenly salvation to be like God? That is the Lakan 44,000. Now, how is black related to this uh, church? Huh? Should we go to heaven in black horses? What is the meaning of black in the Bible? 
You see, black always in the Bible means pain, suffering, mourning, death, sorrow, pain. You see, now how do we go to heaven? Can we go and put our roses to heaven? No. We can't go, you see, and bed of roses to heaven. We need to go to heaven, you see, with much tribulation. Read Acts 14.22. Acts 14.22. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Acts 14.22? Acts 14.22. Yes, brother. Read Acts 1422. 1422, brother. Oh. Confirming the souls of the disciple and the exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Ah, through much tribulation. We can't go to heaven in the bed of roses. And the thief went lost, momentarily repented, he went. Did he thief repent? No, no, no. Thief never asked for forgiveness of sins. Where will he repent? You see, the thief never went to heaven. We can't go to heaven with just repenting at the last moment. We need to work out a salvation through much tribulation only. We need to enter the kingdom of God. Now, how did Jesus go to heaven? How did Jesus go to the divine nature? Just like that? No, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. Read Hebrews 5.8. Hebrews 5.8. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Hebrews 5 8? <coughs> Though he were a son, it learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Ah, by suffering, Jesus learned obedience. Though he were a son, if Jesus himself has gone on the black horses, how can we expect to go just like that? So black always in the represents, you see, suffering. Sufferings is required to reign with Christ. Even. You see, the church in the Bible is compared to black. You see, how, how, what is the color of uh, Jesus' bride? Huh? You see? Let us read Songs of Solomon 1 5. Uh, Romy sister, can you read Songs of Solomon 1st chapter 5th verse? Okay, brother. Uh. I am black, but uh, comely, mm. O oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem, as mm. the tents of Kedar, mm. as, as the curtains of Solomon. Mm. Continue. Mm. Why she is black? Look not up, uh, upon me, because I am black. Because because the sun hath looked upon me. Ah, My mother's you, children were... Ah, you see? So, I am black, yet beautiful. How is the color of Jesus' wife? You know, the church. She's black, not fair enough. Black means what? Eh? She says, no? Because sun has looked upon me. If you go in the sun... What will happen? He'll become black. If you stay in the house, he'll be fair enough. So, black in the Bible represents suffering. Sun means what? You see, persecutions, tribulations, trials. You see, the church is in the midst of tribulations, trials, difficulties. Hence, she is black. But yet, Songs of Solomon it says, she is beautiful. So that Jesus likes her. Hence, if you need to go to the divine nature, we can go only in the black horses. So black horses are very, very important. So this represents a group of lakh and 44,000. Okay. Now there is the next group. 
next horse that followed the black horse sir which color is that who will tell me zakaria it tells now which is the other color of horses that followed the black horses read verse 6 zakaria 6 6 is given there see anybody read and tell me an answer Zechariah 6 6. Which is the second horse? Nobody is open the Bible. Fast, fast. White horse. Very good, brother. So, white horses are for the black horses. Now, you tell me huh? who else go to the heavenly salvation along with the church? Which is the group? Tell me. Great multitude, brother. Very good, brother. So, it's a great multitude. So, how is white color related to the great multitude? We know in Revelation 7 chapter, the great multitude are clothed with white robes. Read. Uh, Revelation 7 chapter, verse 9. Muna sister, can you read Revelation 7, 9? After this I beheld and lo a great multitude who is no man could number of all nations and kindred and people and tongue stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and plum in their hands. Mm. Clothed with the white robe. So what is white robe? You see, Elder replies they are defined there. White robe. Since they are put into a great time of trouble, but they may wash their robes by the blood of Christ. You see, we have already studied this one. As soon as we accept Christ, God gives us a white robe of righteousness. This has to be maintained clean and neat, daily approaching the throne of grace and washing it cleanly, thoroughly. But if you neglect it, what will happen? Black spots will fall here and there. Ultimately, what will happen? You see, that white cloth will become a very dirty and it can't be washed easily. So it has to be put for a very, very harsh wash. So God will hand over this great multitude who have not remained faithful to God, you see, in the midst of trials and tribulations. So God will put them to more severe trials. So that is the time that they'll start appreciating God and try to cleanse themselves of all the bad things. You see, but by that time, it will be too late and they will lose the crown. You see, but uh, they will be of the heavenly salvation like uh, angels. They will go to heaven, but they can't be of the divine nature. They will lose the opportunity to be, you see, queens of Christ, to rule with Christ. But uh, they will be like angels uh, in heaven. Uh, you see, Therefore, dear brother, this is the second horse. Sorry, this is the third or the white horse, the great multitude. Okay. Now, which is left over? The last one. Two combination of two horses. One is patch patch. You see, speckled. Another is a dark. You see, bay horses. What does it mean? The Bible gives us a clue. This went to the south country. Now, which is the opposite of north? South. North means seven. Opposite of heaven means what? It is earth. This represents the class of people who go to the earthly salvation. Who are they? You see, already we studied the ancient world. Is. This represents the general world of mankind. When Christ returns the second coming, he is going to rule on this earth for a thousand years. All the dead people are going to come back to life. You see, what will happen once they come back to life? The truth will be given to them. Satan will be completely bound. And as they remain obedient to God and prove the faithfulness to God, their age will run backwards. You see, the age will run from 60 to 50, 50 to 40, 40 to 30. 30 is a perfect man's age. So man will return back to the days of his youth. This is going to happen in God's kingdom. That is what the meaning of, uh, you see, the spotted horses. That means what? Uh, 
as they come in the resurrection, they won't be pure. They will be having spots of sin here and there. But as there is in the truth, what will happen? Slowly these spots will be removed. Slowly the slow spots will what happen? Will go away from them slowly. Read Job 33.25. Job 33, uh, 25. Joel brother, can you read Job 33, 25? His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. Very good. You see, he shall return to the Days of his youth. You see, so this is the worldly salvation for the general section for the whole world. Okay. But there was one more horse. Dark brown. You see, it's, a, it, it's called as bay horses. Now, this horse, you see, requested a permission from God. What was the permission? Read Zechariah 6 chapter, verse 7. <laughs> Zechariah 6 7. Romister, can you read Zechariah 6 7? And the day and the bay went forth hmm. and south to hmm. to go. So that the to and fro through the earth. And he said, Get you hence, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walked on to fro through the earth. Ah, see, they requested to walk to and fro through the earth. Now, what is the meaning of walking to and fro through the earth? You see, to and fro means what? Like a pendulum go here and there and come. Uh -huh. This is the character of God. Not Standing firmly in truth, going here and there, here and there, here and there. You see, huh? swinging here and there. This is the character of the devil. Read Job 1 7. Job 1st chapter 7th verse. Uh, Munna sister, can you read Job 1 7? And the Lord said unto Satan, uh, When comest thou? The Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down it in it. See? Satan replied, saying, uh, I am going for to and fro through the earth. That is the character of the devil. So these people are representing, even in thousand years, uh, even after binding Satan, even after giving him the truth, uh, you see, even after the eyes of years of, uh, you know, are opened. Uh, they will again sin against God. So these people will go to second death. You see, the Bible says that some people will go to second death even after the thousand years. Read Isaiah 26 9. Munaster, can you read Isaiah 26 9? With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yeah, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgment are in the earth, the in inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Very good. Sister. See, when the judgments are on the earth, the inhabitants of the earth will learn righteousness. Then continue, sister. Continue. Huh? Let favor be saved to the wicked. Oh. It will uh, he not learn righteousness oh. in the land of up, uprightness. Oh. Will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord? Ah, oh, yet to show favor to the wicked, yet he shall not learn righteousness. So, even a uh, lot of favor will be shown to the wicked. Some people there in thousand years. They won't report. These will go to the second death. Fire will come directly from heaven and consume them in front of everybody. Revelation 21st chapter. So these people will go to 
second death. So this is the uh, you see pay or sir. So therefore, through Jesus, there are how many salvations? Two salvations, heavenly salvation and earthly salvation. Heavenly salvation has got two parts. One like forty-four thousand and great multitude. Earthly salvation has got two parts. That is, uh, you see, the general world and the ancient world is. Uh, you said, remember the promise which God made to Abraham. I'll make the seed as the stars of the sky and, uh, and the sand of the seashore, heavenly and the earthly salvation. That is what is represented beautifully in the vision of Zechariah sixth chapter. Okay, so may God uh, bless these words. Anybody has got any doubts, any questions? You can let me know. Anybody, any questions? Uh, Joel, brother, any doubts? No question, brother. Okay, Romy, sir, our brother. No question, brother. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, no Joel, brother. Yes, brother. Oh, no, no questions. No, okay. Munaster, any questions? No, brother. Okay, then. Okay, then. Good. Uh, hope you're all doing good. So, not blessed. We'll end the service uh, with a prayer. Uh,